Hi everyone, welcome back to the next video of this entire series where we are talking about SharePoint Online. In the previous video, we talked about sharing permissions and settings in SharePoint Online. We learned how document sharing works in SharePoint Online. We talked about the type of sharing permissions, how to assign permissions while sharing documents, and how to remove sharing permissions. In this particular video, we will talk about metadata in SharePoint Online. We will learn what is metadata, what is the use of metadata in SharePoint Online. We will learn how to create metadata. We will learn how to filter the documents on the basis of their metadata, how to group by the documents using metadata, and so on. In SharePoint Online, Metadata is basically the additional information or the attributes of the documents. For example, in this document library, we have few documents and for each document, we have three columns. These are by default columns. We have name that indicates the name of the document. We have the modified date on what date the particular document was modified and we have modified by that shows us who modified a particular document. So these columns represent the additional information about these documents. And with the help of this information, we can further categorize or organize these documents. We can filter these documents using this information. We can group by the documents. For example, if I want to group by these documents on the basis of their modified date, I'll click on the drop down arrow and click group by modified. And all these documents will be grouped as per their modified date. Now the columns that you see here, name, modified, and modified by, these columns are the default columns. When you create a document library in SharePoint site, by default, you get these three columns, and you can use these columns to organize your documents. But let's say you need some more details about these documents to organize them properly. For example, if you look at this document library, we have lots of information about each document. For example, we have name, we have report type that shows us if a particular document or a report is a sales report, it's a customer feedback, or it's a web trends. Then we have honor that shows the particular honor of a particular document. We can see the year when the report was published. We have the modified date, modified by, and we have one more column for comments. So all this information is a metadata for each document. And we can organize these documents on the basis of this information. For example, if I want to sort these documents on the basis of the year, when these were created, I will click on the drop down arrow next to report here. And from here, we can sort these documents in ascending order or descending order. Let's click smaller to larger, which is ascending order. And we can see all the documents are sorted in ascending order. Same way, if I want to filter these documents on the basis of honor, I will click on honor column and I'll click filter by. On the right, I can see all the honors of these documents. For example, I want to see the documents owned by Bob Ross. I'll check Bob Ross and click apply. So now I can see the documents. Those are owned by Bob Ross. So this is the purpose of creating metadata in SharePoint Online. So by end of this video, our new document library will look like this. So let's go back to the other site. And in this site, we are going to use doc library, which is a document library. We will use this document library to create our metadata. So we will create columns in this document library, which will be our metadata. To create a column in document library, you will click add column. And here you will see a list of data types that can be used to create metadata. We can use text, choice, date and time, multiple lines of text, person, number, and so on. You can use all these data types to create columns in a document library. So first, we will create a choice column. 
So select choice and go next. Here we will give it a name, report type. Type will remain choice. Now here we have three choices by default, but if you want to add another choice, we can click add choice and we can add few more as well. So for this demo, I just need three and we can rename these choices as well. So basis on the document, I'll make the changes here. So we have sales document. Then we have customer feedback and we have web trends. If you want, you can change the color of these choices as well. This is on your requirement. You can change them. And like this, you can change the color. We will leave these two options unchecked and click more options. Under display choices using, we can select if we want a drop down menu to select the report type or we need a radio button. The choices that we are going to create here, we will use these choices within the column to select the report type. So here, either you can set it as a drop down menu that when you will click on the menu or the column, you will get a drop down menu or you need radio buttons and you can select one of the report types. I want this as drop down menu, so I'll leave it as it is. And I want my users to select only one choice. So I leave this option disabled. And then we have required that this column contains information. This setting means the users can't leave this column blank. The users will have to select one of these choices for each document. So I will turn this option to on and click save. So the column is ready with name report type. And this is our metadata that will be used to organize our documents. Now it's time to add the report type from the choices that we just created. There are two ways to add choices for these documents. If you have less number of documents in document library, you can right click on a document, go to details. On the right, you will see report type column, which is our report type column within the document library. Click select an option and based on the report type, select the option from here. So our report is customer feedback. So let's select customer feedback. And this is automatically saved and we can see the value is updated here as well. The other way is click edit in grid view at the top. And from here we can modify all the documents. So let's update these documents one by one. So this is customer feedback. Let's select the report type. This is sales. This is also sales. So like this, you can update the choices column. And once done, click exit grid view. So this is how this document library will look like. Now let's add another column with data type honor. Click add column and click person and click next. And let's give it a name honor type will be person or group. And if you want to show the profile picture within the column, you can turn this option to on and click more options. I do not want to allow multiple selections and this is the required column. So I'll click to yes and click save. So the column is ready. We will again go to edit in grid view and let's add honor for each document. So as soon as you will type the name of a user, this wizard will automatically detect the account for that user. So let's click Bob Ross account. We can see the user is added and like this, we can add honors for each document. And once done, click exit grid view. Now, if you hover your mouse over any user, this will display the complete information about that particular account. Now let's add another column on the basis of number data type. And this will be another metadata for these documents. So let's click add column and select number and click next. 
let's give it a name report here and type will be number we will leave it as it is and click more options now if you are creating this column for the decimal numbers for example 1.23 or 20.45 so under number of decimal places you can select how many numbers you want to show after the decimal but we are creating this column for the year so we will select zero i do not want to separate the numbers so i will disable this option and we need this option that says require that this column contains information and click save so the column is ready let's go to edit in grid view and let's add report year for each document and once done click exit grid view so now we have additional metadata for these documents now let's see how we can filter the documents based on this metadata so let's say we want to see the reports based on their report type so we will click report type and here let's click filter by i want to see only the sales reports so i'll check sales and click apply so now i can see only the sales reports within this document library if you want to clear the filter you can click on this clear filters on the right and this will clear the filter if you want to filter the report on the basis of let's say customer feedback check this option click apply i can see only the documents or the reports for the customer feedback report type or let's say we want to filter these documents on the basis of owner i want to see the documents whose owner is bob ross so i'll click owner and filter by on the right we can see all the owners select bob ross click apply now i can see the documents whose owner is bob ross similarly i can filter these documents for team 1 and i can see the documents those are owned by team 1 so like this you can filter the documents this is on a particular metadata let's assume we want to sort these documents on the basis of the year they were created so i will click report year and let's sort these documents in ascending order based on the report year so click smaller to larger and you can see all these documents are sorted in ascending order if you want to reverse it or you want to sort these documents in descending order click report year and then click larger to smaller so now these documents are sorted as per the report year in descending order we can also use this metadata to group the documents to group a document on the basis of report type column for example click report type click group by report type and now you can see all these documents are grouped as per their report type we have all the documents under customer feedback we can see number of the documents sales documents are under sales group the number of documents we can see here and similarly web trends are grouped under this particular report type you can also move the columns for example i need honor column next to the name so i will click honor drag it and drop it here honor column is now next to name similarly if i want report type here i can move it here as well so by creating the metadata we can easily organize the documents as per our requirement when we create a document library we get only three columns like we discussed earlier which is a default metadata for the library but by creating additional metadata we can sort the documents we can filter them we can easily locate them it becomes very easy to understand that what exactly a document is about we can group the documents as per their categories and so on 
and like we discussed when we create a column we have n number of data types that can be used to create metadata you can use all these data types to create columns within your library and you can organize the documents but all these options that you perform here like filter the documents sorting the documents or grouping the documents these activities are basically for you only the other users will not be able to see if you do any filtering or grouping here because this is your personal view but if you want to do it for all the users you can create views or modify the existing views so that if a user comes into this document library they all get the standard representation of your documents within this document library moreover the metadata that we just created this is applicable to this document library only if i create another document library in the same site i will not get these columns to display all this metadata in all the document libraries of your site you need to create this metadata on the site level